Hi, it's Charlie Minotto from HalfWheel.com, and over the years I've reviewed a lot of different humidors in all shapes and sizes, but when it comes to traditional desktop humidors, like the ones you see in front of me, most of the desktop humidors I have reviewed have been in the four to $600 price point, which is basically the upper middle class of desktop humidors. And so for my next review, or as it turns out, my next seven reviews, I wanted to see if there was a cheaper or cheap humidor that actually works that I would recommend. And I specifically started looking to see if I could find a $100 humidor that advertises holding 100 cigars that was a traditional wooden humidor, so no plastic, that would work. And I quickly realized that probably wasn't going to happen. So I ended up changing those qualifications a little bit and bought seven humidors that all meet basically three requirements. The first is they got to look like a traditional desktop humidor. So there's no uh, plastic, there's no acrylic humidors, there's no converted coolers. They got to be things that you would think of when you think of a humidor. The second is that they need to hold at least 50 Robustos and not the advertised number. They needed to be capable of legitimately holding it without any humidor Tetris. 50 cigars, normal size cigars quite easily, of which I think all of these do. And the third was that there was a hard price limit of $175 before tax or shipping. Now I will point out some of these humidors were bought on sale, but I also think some of these humidors are on sale year round. So whatever the case is, you should be able to, with a little bit of research, find any of the seven humidors that are being reviewed as part of the series for less than $175. This is the Duville Tobacco Leaf Humidor. The Duville part references a place in Northwest France and the tobacco leaf references the top of the humidor where there's this large image of a tobacco leaf. This this is from Quality Importers Trading Company, and they've been mentioned throughout this series of seven humidors because Quality Importers is one of, if not the largest supplier of humidors in the world. Um, they make small travel humidors, plastic humidors, all the way up to double door walking cabinet humidors where I could walk inside and fit inside of it with the doors closed, and they certainly make plenty of desktop humidors. I've reviewed multiple Quality Importers made humidors. This is the second one of sort of their house brand of humidors, which usually go under the name Humidor Supreme, but if you remember the Craftsman's Bench humidor, which is a J.C. Newman brand, that humidor was actually made uh, by quality importers. They don't make all of J.C. Newman's humidors, but they do make uh, or made the one that I reviewed earlier in this series. Now, we paid $99.99 uh, for this humidor. That was without shipping, though. It cost another $19.99 at the time, which was last August, to get this humidor shipped to us in Dallas. I've seen the price fluctuate. Sometimes you can find this humidor in the 80s, and some pl places have it priced um, a little bit above $100, but this is sort of a $100 humidor, maybe plus ship. Uh, and it's rated at 100 uh, cigars. It measures 13 and a half inches from here to here, nine and a half inches from here to here, and then six and 3.75 inches to so three eighths inches from the top to the bottom on the outside. Inside, it measures 12 inches uh, on the interior. It's 8.25 inches from here to here, so from front to back, and then it's 4.625 inches from the bottom of the humidor to this piece right here. I suspect there's about another inch and a quarter of space from where this piece uh, would touch, or where cigars would touch the top of the inside of the humidor, um, but you know, how usable that space is depends uh, you know, on how willing you are to have cigars potentially smashed. Obviously, you can see up here, there are these wood elements too that are gonna reduce the, the height um, in the inside of the humidor. For those wondering, it weighs 6.9 pounds, and I should also point out that you may have been hearing these, but they have these metal handles, which is a nice feature. That's not included in those dimensions I gave you. So if you're really, really tight on space and are wanting to fit this like inside of a shelf, just know that you probably want to give yourself closer to 14 inches of space uh, because of these two metal handles, which I otherwise do kind of like. It's not my aesthetic, but um, these are nice feeling as opposed to some of the other cheaper humidors where a lot of times this will be plastic. So as far as what's included with the humidor, uh, when you open it up, you can see there's supposed to be this analog hygrometer it's supposed to stick up here. It, it's completely given up. Quality Importers has a lot of times these adhesive backed metal or magnetic pieces that attach the lid here. I have found pretty consistently that these things don't want to stick on and that leads to them falling off. And for my purposes in testing these humidors, these lids aren't being opened and closed very often. I'm guessing it's probably lid probably hasn't been open more than 25 times. So um, if you are planning on using these accessories that you probably are going to have to do something to figure out a way to stick, uh, this one seems to have stuck a lot better uh, with these metal pieces, although one of them actually will come off. I'm sure if I took the humidifier on and off a few more times, it would peel off. One of them is sticking well. I, I don't really understand exactly why. You also have an included tray, which is a nice feature, and it's got a removable divider. You can see it just slides right out. And then on the bottom, there are two more. 
removable dividers you can see right there. And so it's a pretty standard fare for a 100 count humidor. Um, you know, certainly uh, I like the tray aspect. Not all humidors at this price point are going to have that. There's also obviously the included key uh, with the keyhole up front. That's good if you have kids. I'm not sure beyond that as a security measure in, in terms of preventing someone from stealing cigars, it's probably not going to be very useful. I certainly have never really found myself using them, but it's there if you want it. So if you've seen any of the other videos in this series, you know that I have a standardized test procedure for testing testing all of these humidors. And it starts with this device. This is a sensor push. It's not included with any of the humidors here. They cost about $50 and there are some more advanced ones now. And what this is, is a wireless Bluetooth that also works with Wi-Fi uh, hygrometer. So it measures the temperature and the humidity of the environment that it's in. So right now it's measuring the room. But what I use these for is I place them inside of the humidors and that way I can test and measure the relative humidity without having to open them. And not only that, the sensor push records the data points. It records them every minute, and I can export them uh, via the sensor push app to my computer and download them into Excel and produce the charts that you're about to see in a second. The problem is, is that the first sensor push device that was uh, in this humidor for the testing procedure uh, that was supposed to be completed in the late spring failed. At some point it stopped recording data for about three months and then miraculously decided to start recording data again. Now because of the number of humidors that are being tested at any given time and also because of just general life stuff, I don't actually look at the data as they're going through the testing procedures. That's one of the beauties of the sensor push. The problem was was that this got about a third of the way through the testing process and then it failed and then uh, I didn't have any data. So I restarted the process. So what that meant is that this humidor went through the process twice from start to finish and that process starts with the sensor push and it also starts by removing the included humidifier and it moves on to seasoning so what i do is i take a brand new sponge i dip it into a glass full of distilled water i then put it on a plate like this and then with the included dividers removed i place the plate inside of the humidor i make a big noise and then I close the lid for a week. I come back one week later, take the sponge out, dip it back in distilled water, put it back on the plate, and then close the humidor for another week. Now the sponge has basically no ability to not let that moisture go out. So it's gonna go full bore. And the idea is that it's very similar to if you were to stick like a big bowl of water essentially at the bottom of the humidor and just let that moisture evaporate into the box and hopefully seep into the wood of the humidor. So I did that process twice. And then what I do is I take the plate out. I take the included humidifier and I use it how it's intended. So in this case, it's a floor stem humidifier. So that means a 50-50 mix of propylene glycol and distilled water. Uh, and then I put it in and I close the lid for four weeks. I come back after that's done. I take the included humidifier out. I then take three brand new Boveda packs, 60 gram, 69% packs. I put them in the humidor after weighing them and I leave the humidor closed for six weeks. After that, I take the Boveda packs out. I reweigh them. And then I put this into a dry cabinet, which is what you're seeing on the screen right now. Now the dry cabinet allows me to set the relative humidity in the ambient air. It's used for photo equipment in super humid environments to help try to make sure that it doesn't uh, get destroyed by the humidity. But in this case, what it allows me to do is to create a sort of controlled environment where the ambient relative humidity isn't going to be affected or isn't going to affect the results inside, or at least that's what's supposed to happen in theory. Normally the seasoning data isn't exactly the most interesting and oftentimes I don't really even spend much time on it, but in this particular case, it's interesting because it started at 58.9%. Now that was after the humidor had gone through the full testing process the first time and then sat empty with nothing inside of it, no humidification, no cigars for two months. What that suggests to me is that the box was in a decent place. It wasn't completely dry, otherwise it would have been much lower than that. Um, but it's also interesting to look at the humidor data and see that it didn't seem to want to get that high. Um, I would have expected if the humidor had been extremely well seasoned that these numbers would have been, you know, in the 85% or at least north of 80. But the fact that it didn't even cross 75 is somewhat alarming. Um, it gets particularly problematic once we move to the included humidifier data where things went really, really poorly. Um, it confirmed my suspicion that a single floor stem humidifier in this size of humidor um, is not enough. This has been a problem with a variety of humidors in this test. It took 
three days for it to drop below 65% relative humidity, just under a week for it to get below 60% relative humidity, and then in less than 20 days, it was already dropping below 50% relative humidity. I think that um, what probably happened here is that the humidor itself uh, was in a decent place seasoning-wise, but um, it wasn't able to take on a lot of that excess moisture, which helps to explain that huge spike at the beginning of the chart. And then it was just the moisture was going to go somewhere. Um, I'm not a scientist. I don't exactly understand what happens in a world where the humidor is closed like this with nothing presumably else absorbing the moisture. But it would not surprise me if I learned that the floor swimming humidifier started to try to absorb that moisture. It's a sponge. It's definitely going to absorb some of it. I don't think it would absorb all of it. So some of it might have leaked out. But there is something... Um, that I, I play there, um, at least, you know, I would have to imagine given my experience um, with humidors. Now, the Bovida data is interesting because there's two different uh, ways that I measure the Bovida data. The one that you see up there is the chart um, or the graph with the relative humidity data points, and you can see that the Bovida has never had a shot. Um, they yeah, I mean, they needed to be seasoning packs given how poorly the included humidifier went. It, it was not seasoning packs. They were just 69% relative humidity, and they failed to get up to 60%. What they say is one pack for every 25 cigars in storage. It's a bit tough when you're trying to guess this based off of humidors because uh, there's not a consistent measure of like what size uh, capacity a humidor is based off of the internal dimensions. Uh, the other thing I would say to Bovida in this instance is that nothing else was inside of it. So three packs presumably should have been able um, to power a closed humidor for six weeks, assuming that the humidor itself didn't have some issues. Now, I mentioned there's another data point. There's actually two parts of that data point, um, and that's because I weigh the bovidas when they go in the humidor and when they come out. So the second time around, they weighed 182 grams at the start, and they came out at 115 grams. They were super dry. Almost all of the moisture and flexibility or the pliability in the packs was gone. Now, because the weight isn't measured via the sensor push, I have the data from the first time around. Those three packs started at 188 grams and ended up in a very similar place at 118 grams. And my notes suggest that they were also quite dry. Now, the final test is the dry cabinet. I still haven't exa actually been able to make sense of a lot of this data. Um, and it's something that I'm going to try to revisit when we do our next sort of series of humidor reviews. Uh, there was a less than a 5% drop. But as I've also found, uh, the lower the relative humidity is at the start of this test, um, the better the results are in terms of the percentage of drop typically is inside of that cabinet because there's just less moisture to lose. So moving on to the pros and cons, I will start with the first pro, and that is the value. Uh, from a how many cigars does this store versus how much money does it cost, it's a near one-to-one -one ratio in terms of the Robustos for the amount of dollars. Now, Quality Importers obviously markets this humidor as a 100 count. I use something called the Humidor Discount Humidor Calculator, which takes the internal dimensions, so the volume inside, and then it will display how many Robustos or Coronas or double Coronas uh, that a humidor could store based off of of just the math and maximizing that space. Now, it's unlikely that you'll be able to do that. First of all, it probably means you'd have to cut some cigars in half. And then the other problem is, is that like plenty of other humidors, there are these included and not removable pieces down here that are gonna take up some of that space. But like I mentioned earlier, that measurement doesn't include the maybe inch and a quarter uh, more height that you have uh, if you were willing to just pile everything on top of it. And so for $100 for about 100 Robustos, that's a pretty good bargain. Now, the second thing, which might be surprising given how much of a mess the testing process was from the sensor push failing uh, to the data being somewhat challenging to make sense of, is that I do actually think the box itself probably holds moisture in pretty well, particularly for this price point. And in terms of uh, visual inspection and feeling the humidor and opening and closing it, it does seem like the seal here is pretty good. It's certainly um, in the top half of this testing procedure. Um, there's a little bit of, you know, uh, particularly on this side of it, not aligning 100%. But unlike some other humidors where there's massive visible gaps, there's none of that going on here. The lid opens and closes easily as you would expect it to. And so there's nothing wrong there. And the third thing I'll say, the look is not for me, but if you're into sort of an older classical look, you've got some, you know, dark furniture, some large leather chairs, this will probably look pretty good on an end table or a side table. Um, now, like I mentioned earlier, there are uh, nine other design options for this model of humidor if this isn't for you. But I do think for this price point, it certainly could fit into a room and you wouldn't, unlike some other humidors, the last humidor I reviewed from Humidor Supreme,
stream, you wouldn't be able to immediately tell upon opening it that it was $100. It looks uh, like it's more expensive and there's no dead giveaways, at least um, you know if there were no imperfections on the finish, uh, that would suggest that it's not. So that's gonna lead to the cons, and I'm gonna start with the most obvious one or the most obvious ones, and that is that this humidor showed up to our office looking beat the hell up. It is not the worst looking humidor I saw come out of its shipping box in this series. The, the worst looking one looked like it had been dropped on the ground five or six times with no shipping protection at all, but it is a mess. And it's unfortunate that the most obvious errors and I think probably the largest quantity of errors are on the two places of the humidor where you wouldn't really want them. They're on the top and on the front facing panel. Um, the worst one runs, I think, a little bit more than half of the length of the humidor, the width of the humidor. On the top piece of this lid right here, it looks like the humidor got sideswiped by a car or something. I have no other way to describe it. There are dents uh, here, I believe, is where the dent is. There are scratches. Some of the scratches that are on this humidor right now, I assure you, were caused by us. That's what happens when you have a high-gloss humidor and it gets moved around a little bit. But we have pictures from immediately after it got out of its shipping box that you know indicate that these were there, or at least some of these were here, um, once the humidor got to our office and was taken out of its box. And if that wasn't enough on the inside, and what is a pretty common problem with these humidors at this price point, these pieces right here, these two strips of wood that hold up the tray when it's inside, not only are they not exactly the right size or they, they could run the full length, but they don't, which looks a little shoddy. Not only does the wood itself uh, look like it's, you know, had pieces of it chipped out but, um, and they weren't in the bottom of the humidor when it showed up to the office, there's also like glue residue, it appears, that just never got wiped off. Um, and so uh, all these things, or, or you know, all the, the three big things I specifically mentioned, were all there at the beginning when we photographed the humidor. And if that wasn't enough, if you were like, well, maybe UPS caused it or maybe Half Wheel did, you can see at the front here, there's a place where they clearly sprayed or painted a second time around to try to fix an imperfection. Um, and I'm sure it looks better now than what it did, but the problem is, is it's very obvious to see. And like I said, it's on the front. So it's the thing that you're gonna see once you get up close to the humidor. And if that wasn't enough, the next con, which is perhaps even worse than the, the visual appearance, is that there's a quality control sticker on the bottom of the humidor. It leads to one of two scenarios, absent sort of an acts of God, things I would not be able to explain. Option one is that every single humidor just gets a quality control sticker put on the bottom of it. Option two is that somebody looked at this humidor and just didn't seem to care about the issues and stuck the quality control label on it. I don't know which one's worse. Um, I can't think of another explanation for how all of these issues could be caused. I don't think UPS was dumping glue in the inside of the humidor. Um, and so these are problems. They certainly take place at this price point, uh, and they quite frankly take place at some other price points as well. But it's very problematic if you're going to buy this humidor not in person. And if you're going to buy it online like us and it's just going to show up, obviously most retailers probably would let you return it. Um, but, you know, that's a lot of a pain in the ass. So, um, you know, another shout out as to why you should go to a local cigar shop and look at the humidor in person before you buy it. So that way you don't run into this issue. Now, the third issue is something that's also plagued a lot of humidors in the series, I believe all but one, and that is the use of fluorescent foam. So if you ever ask someone how you should store your humidor, you will likely hear 70 and 70. 70% 70 relative humidity and 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And that is because of propylene glycol, more specifically propylene glycol's use in products like this. This is a fluorescent foam humidifier. It is the most common type of included humidification option for humidors, not just at the low end, it comes in high-end products, it comes in all different shapes and sizes, things like this. And if you open it up, what you will find is this. This is fluorescent foam, as the name implies, it is foam that is used by florists. What florists do is they soak this in water and then they attach flowers to it and they can use it to make intricate patterns and designs with the flowers while making sure that the flowers stay watered. It's been used in humidors for decades and the way that it works according to the manufacturers, at least most of them, is that you take your product like this and you put a one-to-one, -one, a 50-50 ratio of distilled water and propylene glycol, which is sold in cigar shops as humidor solution and all sorts of other names like that. In short, if you see something, a chemical sold in a cigar shop that's labeled for your humidor, it's probably propylene glycol. And the reason behind this is because if you were to just take this and put it in distilled water like the floors do, it would release uh, the water at a way too high of a rate. There would be nothing really restricting the amount of water that gets released. Propylene glycol has a chemical property that allows for it to restrict it. And depending on the ratio of water to propylene glycol, you can actually try to achieve a specific type of relative humidity. 
The problem is, is that 50-50, 50% distilled water, 50% propylene glycol, is not going to get anywhere close to 70% relative humidity. There's a third variable, that's the temperature, but the charts that I found from scientists, and this is way above my head, None of them got close to a temperature that made it so that you could have it at 50-50 and get to 70% relative humidity. Even if you got down to 20 degrees, it still wasn't close. And what you actually need is something that's probably closer to two-thirds propylene glycol to one-third distilled water to get to 70% relative humidity. And I might even go beyond that. I might even take it to maybe 80% propylene glycol to 20% distilled water. But I would just use something that wasn't invented in 1954. And the reasons behind that are these products are terribly frustrating. You will oftentimes end up with them putting out way too much moisture because there's just not really a great way to, to unless you're gonna you know, weigh out the propylene glycol to distilled water every time uh, to get the two thirds to one third, it's gonna be a challenge. Um, and there are problems to that. So if you over humidify your cigars, at the very least it probably will affect the flavor and maybe it makes them better, but probably not. It likely will cause burn issues over humidified cigars tend to not want to stay lit as well. That's why you'll hear people talk about dry boxing cigars if you have burn issues with cigars. And in the worst of instance, you run the risk of molt. So this is a floor swim humidifier that was filled with a 50-50 ratio. And as you can see, there's now mold growing on the outside of the humidifier. And obviously if there's mold growing there, that means that there's mold floating around your humidor, which will eventually get onto your cigars and cause you all sorts of problems. So the short of this is, don't use something that was invented in 1954 to humidify your cigar. Uh, this isn't going to power a humidor of this size. Uh, this is one of these drawbacks you're gonna have at this price point where you're going to get a humidor that comes with not only cheap accessories, but probably not enough capability to really be usable. And this is certainly the case. I suspect that if I put 70 cigars in here, even 70 properly humidified cigars, and tried to use this humidifier, I probably would need to be refilling this thing at least once every 10 days, um, maybe once a week. It, it's it's not great. It, it's not going to work. Um, and what you really want in a humidor when it comes to humidification is as consistent as possible. You want a 55 mile an hour cruise control. This device sort of works like a zero to 150 to zero test where it shoots all the way up and releases all of its moisture. And then it goes plummets all the way down. It actually starts to absorb some moisture most likely. And then you refill it and it goes back up like this. The propylene glycol can help to restrict it a little bit. Once again, if you get those proportions right, but I would recommend using something else. So after all that, you might be surprised to learn that I'm actually going to recommend this humidor just with two caveats. The first is that if you're interested in buying the Duville Tobacco Leaf humidor or any of the Humidor Supreme 100 count humidors, quite frankly, any humidor remotely close to this price point, you do it at your local store. You go in, you take the humidor out of its box, you look at it, you make sure there are no visual imperfections, sideswiped cars in the front of the humidor. And maybe there are, and maybe you're good with it. Maybe you can work out a little bit of a discount, but I suspect that most people would not be okay with the amount of visual imperfections and the type of visual imperfections that are here um, at this price point, even potentially under a scratch and dent situation. It's, it's a lot. Um, the second caveat is that I would recommend that you take the included humidification products and put them in the trash can. I have no confidence that the analog hygrometer is going to work and the included humidifier, the data says is, is just not going to work. Humidors are a lot of different things. They're furniture. Some people look at them as art pieces, uh, but functionally speaking, they're made to keep your cigars in smokable conditions. And if that's the case, I would take some of the money that you're saving because you're getting a hundred count humidor for roughly a hundred dollars. And I would invest that in humidification products, ideally Boveda, but maybe if you're not wanting to go that route, maybe you get some gel or super absorbent polymers. And if that's the case, I think you ended up with a pretty good humidor. Structurally, the humidor feels great. There's no loose panels. The lid opens and closes just fine. It passes the visual test. The data is a bit all over the place, but I think it suggests more often than it does not that the box itself is pretty good. It's just a lot of visual imperfections and some poor included accessories. Now, if you're wondering if there are more humidor reviews or what happens to the series, I'll probably post some sort of final thoughts on halfwill.com, maybe not so much on YouTube. There will be more humidor reviews coming in 2022, and there's another series coming, but not until late 2022. That's quite the opposite of this. But in the meantime, you can check out halfwill.com. We review not just humidors, but other cigar accessories, as well as plenty of cigars. And we also write uh, news stories on a pretty much daily basis about what's happening in and around the cigar industry.